everyone. Welcome to the session on interoperation parallelism in the parallel databases. Uh, this, uh, this is one of the parallelism technique in the parallel databases. At the end of this session, uh, you will be able to apply this interoperation parallelism techniques for parallel query execution. Talking about the forms of the query parallelism, you can see that basically there are two types of query parallelism techniques, inter-query parallelism and intra-query parallelism. Again, intra-query parallelism is divided as intra-operation where every individual operation is parallelized and inter-operation where in a, uh, in a query, whatever the operations are there, those operations are parallelized. So again, inter-operation parallelism is divided as pipeline parallelism and independent parallelism. So today we are talking about, in this video, we are talking about interoperation parallelism. So interoperation parallelism, how it works in a same query or a transaction, if different operations are there, then those are concurrently executing. Those are called as, this is called as interoperation parallelism. Two different operations or more than one operations are parallelized of a single query, right? Whereas in interoperation, inter what will happen? A single operation is parallelized, say parallel sort, parallel join like that. But here, multiple operations are parallelized. It is having two forms. One is called as pipeline parallelism. The second one is called as independent parallelism. What is there in the pipeline parallelism? Uh, actually, it is working like producer and consumer thing. Means uh, one of the query, one of the operation is executing the result of that operation is providing to another operation okay as an input but how how it is there the second operation is not waiting for the first operation to complete as on the first operation start its execution as on the tuples are generated the results are generated those are given at uh, simultaneously to the second operation okay consider here that output of one operation of a operation a is there which are consumed by the second operation B, okay, without completing the first operation. Why? Because as on the uh, results are generated, those are provided to the next operation. So in this one, what happens? Operation A and operation B are parallelly working, like an assembly line, where multiple operations are parallelly executing, but output of one is given to the input to the second one. So in the same way. Whereas in independent parallelism, what happens? It is totally independent, working independently. It means the multiple operations in a query, okay, are independently working without means uh, considering anything. Like multiple operations in a query which are not dependent on each other are executing. Okay, uh, rarely this particular uh, parallelism is working. Consider this scenario here, how the parallel execution is going on. Operation 1 operation 2, operation M, okay, and the processors are associated with them, but the result of operation 1 is provided as an input to the operation 2. Again, the result of this is provided to operation M, okay, but how they, those are not waiting. So, in this case, operation 2 is not waiting for the completion of operation 1. As on the data is generated for operation 1, it is, it goes on giving that to operation 2. So, parallelly these operations will work independent, parallelly by getting the output of one and providing the output to another one also. So, this is what, this is called as a pipeline parallelism. Take an example, uh, consider the join of four relations here like uh, R1 joins with R2, joins with R3, joins with R4. Now, if we want to take this operation, this is a query, then how parallelism I can apply in this? See, uh, the parallelism I am applying here is, I am taking the join operation of R1 and R2 and that you may say that I am storing in temp1. As on temp1 is generating, that temp1 is given to the next join operation. So, temp1 joins with R3 and the result is again stored as temp2. As on temp2 is generating, that is given to joining operation of R4. So, parallelly what will happen? These three are working the join operation of this, join operation of this, join operation of this are parallelly working at processor P1, processor P2 and processor P3. Okay, the scenario is here. You can see that R1 joins with R2, joins with R3, joins with R4. 
Okay. So, the first processor P 1 is doing this one like R 1 joins with R 2 is done by processor P 1. As on the results are generated those are given for the next processor P 2. Uh, so, that is provided uh, the, the data is coming here and parallelly it is taking the join operation of R 3 that is done at processor P 2. As on the generated data is there as on it is generating it is consumed by the next processor P 2 here and it is doing the join operation of temp 2 with R 4. So, what will happen here that the pipeline is produced here the pipeline is provided in this one as on the data is generated those are given to the next one. So, processor P 1, processor P 2, processor P 3 are parallelly working and the data they are somebody is producing and somebody is consuming in a pipeline this is a pipeline parallelism. So, what is happening in the pipeline parallelism? Each of the operations are executing in parallel there might be some uh, time difference is there because in our example processor P 1 always starts first then processor P 2 will start and then processor P 3 will start, but parallelly everyone is executing. And uh, send, uh, the result of uh, one is provided to another one. So, sending result tuples to uh, one computation to the next operation is there for the further result calculation. And pipeline able what will happen it will applicable to the pipeline able join evaluation algorithms only for example, index nested loop join. So, wherever pipeline able uh, operations are there there only it is applicable. What are the limitations of this? Okay, what are the factors limiting this uh, particular utility of the pipeline parallelism? What will happen in the pipeline parallelism? It is uh, not good choice if the parallelism is very high. Okay, if we need more parallelism, okay, high degree of parallelism is required in that case it is not a good choice. It is useful with small number of processors okay, where the less number of processors are there it is very useful in that like in our example we have only 3 processors we want to take the join operation. So, parallelly we have done it in a proper way, okay. but it is not applicable where pipeline is not suitable. For example, consider this example here select average of salary from employee group by department ID. So, if this is the thing we cannot do the parallelism here, we cannot do the pipelining here. Why? Because in this one we want to, we want to do the grouping first and then we want to calculate the uh, sum of the salary and then we want to do the average. So, in such cases it is not applicable. Okay? So, therefore, what we can say we cannot expect the full speed up for this one. Now, observe this diagram, pause the video and you observe the diagram and see that what kind of parallelism is applicable here. There is a difference in the earlier diagram and this one. See what it is. It is actually the independent parallelism. How? You can say operation 1, operation 2, operation M. So, all these operations in parallelly executing but those are not dependent. Why those are not dependent? Because the output of this operation is not going to give anywhere. The output of this one finally it is collecting somewhere, but it is not dependent on this one means operation 2 is not dependent on operation 1. Operation M is not dependent on any of the earlier operations here. So, this is called as the independent parallelism. Why? Because here every operation is independently working. Ideally, it is not applicable everywhere. Let us see the example for this. Again the same example we are taking the join operation of 4 relations R 1, R 2, R 3, R 4. How we can do parallelism in this one independently? We are taking two, 2 join operations like R 1 joins with R 2 then which is stored as temp 1 and R 3 joins with R 4 which is stored at temp 2. You can see here that temp 1 and temp 2 are parallelly and independently doing the work. Those are not dependent on each other. Okay, so, if here we have applied independent parallelism. Finally, what we are doing? We want to do, uh, do the collection of the result. Uh, again, we, wa we want to do the join operation. So, temp 1 joins with temp 2, we are taking the join operation here. Actually, the independent parallelism works for processor P1 and P2 for these two here. Okay, here for P1 and here for P2, we are applying the independent parallelism and then we are getting the result. So, P3 has to wait here for the completion of P1 and P2 
or we can apply earlier we have seen the pipeline parallelism so we can apply the pipeline parallelism and uh, the result of p1 we are giving to p3 result of p2 we are giving to p3 and then we can combine the output here at the end so uh, here we have used com independent parallelism also and the pipeline parallelism also so basically talking about the limitation it is not providing high degree of parallelism because independent parallelism uh, means there are not much operations in a single query where independently they are working okay this is the scenario so here r1 joins with r2 r3 joins with r r4 are parallelly working so processor p1 and processor p2 are working as on the results are generated you may apply pipeline here so temp1 and temp2 is uh, doing that work and finally the results are provided okay so here independently these two are executing uh, the join operation and those are given to the next one these are my references thank you